I ditched the drum roaster this week and I've been roasting on a small manual coffee roaster that I bought online for only 45 bucks. And I want to share the results with you. It might be surprising. Stick around. All right, thank you for joining me today and welcome to the Virtual Coffee Lab. I've had a lot of you reach out, ask questions. There's been some conversation going on over the last months and it's been some great information, but it's caused me to wonder, what are you guys using to roast coffee with? So I put a poll out last week and many of you responded. 25% are Be More people. Another 25% are drum roasting people. And then 20% are kind of uh, in this classification called other, which would include things like, I'm sure, the uh, Genie Cafe, the Sanofresco, um, some homemade devices like with uh, heat guns. And then the, there's 5% of you that are using a hot air popcorn popper. And so I'm excited to share with you that this video is for every one of you guys and girls, every one of you that are watching this video. And I'm really excited to talk to you about the results in my experience with the roaster that I use, which is this Nuvo ceramic roaster that I bought online. Now, there have been several reviews of this item, but quite honestly, I wasn't really excited about them because I roast from the perspective of a drum roaster and um, all of the concepts that I've been sharing on my channel here about the three phases of coffee roasting and roasting coffee uh, time over temperature that we learned from Rob Hoos and all of these experts. And that is not what we're seeing on a lot of these videos. They're just basically browning the beans. And um, that's not what this video is going to be about. And this really isn't a review video, although I will be sharing the pros and cons of this roaster and a recommendation whether you should consider it or not. All right, now to the roaster itself. I'm going to share with you what happened to my roasts. I did two roasts with this roaster, and then I'm going to go through the pros and the cons of this roasting device, the Nuvo Ceramic, Korean Ceramic Coffee Roaster, and my recommendation. All right, so I roasted this over a gas stove, natural gas stove. And you can see the clip rolling here of my first roast. I pre-warmed this roaster to 300 degrees. I think it was 300 degrees. I used a temperature gun. This is a laser temperature gun to monitor my temperatures. 300 degrees is when I poured 50 grams of coffee into this roaster. So this is about the same capacity as a hot air popcorn popper, 50 grams of coffee. Um, maybe even a little more than some um, popper people are using. So 50 grams, and as soon as I put it in and started stirring, within a minute the chaff started to come off, the beans started to change color, and I knew that I was in trouble. I knew that my charge temperature was way too high, and so the rest of me sharing my first roast with you is to let you know, uh, to warn you about roasting too hot with this and secondly to uh, let you know how the roaster performed when you make a mistake so my mistake was charging it too high as soon as I saw that I raised the roaster further away from the flame so instead of it being three inches from the flame a low um, setting on my stove it was five or six inches I continued to swirl and I mean, it was too late for dry, okay? So dry was like two, two and a half minutes. And then it was, the beans were all yellow. So I knew it wasn't roasted. I knew the heat had not penetrated all the way through. And I would most likely have underdeveloped coffee because my dry phase was so short. That's a tip that's really important for new roasters. You guys are trying to figure this out. If you are roasting your coffee, and your dry phase is so short, like two minutes or less, then chances are you're gonna have underdeveloped coffee. With the exception of hot air popcorn popper or hot air people, uh, I haven't quite figured out how that all works 
and how that affects the beans. You guys can share your experiences with me. That would be awesome. Leave those in the comments below on how long your dry times are. But my recommendation is, is that if you can slow your dry time down to four or five minutes, that would be wonderful. And that way the heat can penetrate the beans um, evenly. And when you get into the browning phase, your roasting is going to be consistent. Your colors are going to be consistent. And ultimately the cup is going to be a better cup. So the dry phase is really important. Watch that video that's in the playlist. That'll really be helpful. It was too late on my first roast with this. So I went into the middle phase with this elevated. Definitely slowed it down. So the performance of this by raising it four or five inches off the flame. Game changer. Slowed the roast down. And I was able to get a... I had a lot of momentum that I had to kind of blow off. But I was able to um, get... I think I went through and I was at first crack at six minutes. Now, that's way too early for me based on those two phases, but I guess the bottom line is is that if I was on a drum roaster, I never would be able to do that. There's no way I could have uh, slowed it down that much, and I was able to do that with this. So six minutes first crack, and then a minute and a half, and then I dropped it. And when I dropped it out, you drop it out the handle, the beans come out the handle. It's a pretty cool little device here. So the first roast was a learning experience for me and I'm not going into details about how the roaster, um, the benefits or the performance of the roaster yet because I want to do that with my second roast and here's the clip from my second roast. I learned some things and so now I'm weighing out 60 grams of coffee. I want to add a little more. That's going to give me a little more mass. It's going to take a little longer for the beans to uh, all heat up because I've got more cooler beans in here that need to be warmed up. And I, my charge temperature was 200 degrees. So I let this warm up to about 200 degrees, hit the uh, gun, looked inside, moved it around a few different places, 200 degrees. I charged the beans, 60 grams, and swirled about an inch or two off of the flame. And I continued to do that, continued to um, swirl, as you can see in the video, and I didn't have this chaff flying off in a minute, and I didn't have the beans turn green or turn yellow on me in two minutes. I got through the dry phase. You can see the color progressing here. I'm kind of jumping ahead in the video a little bit, um, just so we can move along in the conversation. But I got up almost a four and a half minute dry phase when I finally called um, yellow and or dry and moved on into the browning phase. I was ecstatic. I was so excited that I was able to do that with this and I can see in this hole, you can look on the video and see, yeah, you can see the color very clearly. I could yellow. smell the yeast um, no, um, the and the baked goods starting no, just higher. at yellow. So I knew my color, my smell, it all made sense to me and I can see all of that happening right in front of my eyes with this roaster. That's a great thing. It's hard to see that on a drum. You got the trier that you pull out, that's a benefit, but if you're on a Beemore or some of these other devices where you can't have good visual on the beans or, or smell it really well, um, it can be a challenge. But this, this worked really well. Browning phase, I elevated like I did to slow down the first roast. I elevated to about seven inches, six inches off the flame. And I was swirling as you can see here in the video. And it took a, a good three, uh, three, four minutes for me to get through my browning phase. I was able to smell along the way. I could smell some of the um, notes, the aromas coming out of the roaster. I could see the browning that was taking place was even. So my roast was even. I was really excited about that. And I was listening and watching the beans as I'm moving them around. Every once in a while, you'll see me stop, look. I took the gun. I watched the temperatures. And the temperatures now, by the time I got to dry end, the temperatures were close to 300 degrees in the roaster, but it took me four and a half minutes to get up to that point. And then I backed away from the heat 
So I basically went, I think, between 300 and 327 degrees, I think is where I was, around maybe 350 degrees, around first crack. I'll have to look at the footage. Um, but my browning phase was great. First crack started to pop. As soon as that happened, um, my camera overheated. I had the camera above the stove, but it was, I thought, high enough where it wasn't going to be affected. But it turned off, I think, because it overheated. And then there's some blackout in the video. You can see here, and all of a sudden, whoosh, it's, you see my cell phone, which is now capturing the rest of the video. But it worked out really well. The browning phase, first crack, and then into my development for a good minute and a half, looking careful at the beans, looking at it, and determining when to drop it. And then I dropped it into a bowl. I wish I would have had like a wire uh, mesh, kind of a cauldron kind of a thing to be able to, to do that. I didn't, I wasn't down here in the lab. I was up in the kitchen. So I went in a bowl and I started blowing on the beans to cool them. Not the greatest thing for me to do because chaff's blown all over the place. Um, but that kind of brought back memories of the Bee More when you open up the Bee More. <laughs> so bottom line is, is that I was able to roast this on the second attempt, meeting the times and temperatures that I wanted to with this handheld roaster. Looking at the beans, you can see that there's a consistency in the color, a little variation. Um, the camera kind of picked up some light and dark but when you look at it with the eye, it's not that different. They're, they're pretty consistent. I haven't tasted the coffee yet. I'm going to put that clip in here because I roasted it um, earlier today. All right, the Guatemalan Huawei that was roasted yesterday on the Nouveau Ceramic Korean Coffee Roaster has been uh, ground, brewed, and is in my hand, and I'm getting ready to taste it. I'll let you know that the aroma from grinding the coffee smelled really good. It smelled a lot like what I do on the roaster here. Um, it smelled maybe a little darker than what I'm used to on this, um, but yeah, it smelled really good, and so now I've brewed it, and I'm gonna give it a taste. I've had this coffee quite a bit on the drum roaster and I got pretty close to the same times and phase percentages with the hand roaster. Uh, so this coffee normally has, it's sweet, it's chocolatey, a little milky, uh, milky caramely, and uh, has a little bit of a green apple note uh, with the acidity. Uh, but that can easily be roasted out with a lengthened development phase. What I'm getting here is I'm getting the chocolate. I'm getting a little bit of a bitterness in the cup. Uh, some sweetness, but a little bit of a bitter uh, aftertaste. I'm thinking that that I'm, might be confusing that with kind of a smoky, um, overlying smoky flavor that is in this coffee that wouldn't normally be in uh, my drum roaster. Um, I'm saying smoky, uh, kind of a little bit of a dirtier taste, not as clean of a cup as the drum roaster. Um, it is definitely, uh, there definitely is a sweetness and there definitely is a body, there definitely is a chocolate. Uh, it is not a muted flat cup at all. Uh, but it isn't as sweet and it isn't as clean as the drum roaster. I think that's probably the best way. Plus this, this roasty note that's in here uh, isn't in the drum roaster either. So I think with some tweaking I could probably clean it up, no pun intended. Um, but I think that for the second attempt I got pretty close to my profile on the drum roaster and within another couple of more attempts, especially if I chart the coffee, if I journal it, you know, write down the times and temperatures and kind of work through a little bit more, I could get a little closer. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with the result and uh, it's pretty much what I expected. All right, but let's talk about the pros and cons of this specific roaster and um, what I think, I guess, if I would recommend it or not. So the answer first, I'll just get the recommendation. Yes, I think I would recommend 
giving this roaster a try. Uh, when I go through the pros and cons, you're going to hear some more details about the things I like or don't like about this because there are some issues with this. Um, but also know, and I think I mentioned it earlier, I have another roasting device that I'm going to be testing in the next week or two and you should watch that video as well. So if you're considering a purchase, watch that video. The next roaster is probably going to, it is going to be more expensive than this, but it's going to be under $200. Uh, probably be 100, between $100 and $200 price range. But um, you might want to watch that and just compare. Let's get to the pros and the cons for the Nouveau Ceramic Korean Manual Coffee Roaster. So one of the pros is that this roaster helps people like me get unplugged from what I'm used to doing here on my roaster. I mentioned it before, the biggest mistake a home coffee roaster can make is to stop learning. And sometimes it's easy for us to have a profile, get used to it, and roast the same thing over and over. This roaster is going to give you the ability to experiment and not worry about wasting coffee. It's going to give you the ability to try some things you might not normally do or might not be able to do with your regular roaster. So I would think that that would be a pro. Another pro is that we're forced to use our senses with this roaster. Last week's video about uh, senses, the smelling and the sight are really important. And this roaster, you have no choice. You've got to look at the color. You've got to look at or, or smell the smell and look at the size of the beans. You've got to be completely involved with the roast and engaged and uh, this roaster does that. So I think that's a good thing and I think it's a good thing to kind of break us out of our habit and to experiment with. I like the design. I think that's another pro. The design is kind of cool looking. It also has in its shape, it just seems to, whether it's the material or the shape, it seems to heat evenly and that is definitely a pro. I was able to get a nice even roast. There weren't any hot spots. There was no scorching, but that's because because of the design, I'm able to have the beans move and tumble and swirl, and I'm able to create air, airflow by swirling the beans, and I think those are all pros to, uh, to a roaster like this, a manual roaster, such an inexpensive roaster. And that's another pro is it's inexpensive. Uh, I bought this, I've bought this actually twice, okay, so the first time I purchased it two weeks ago, it arrived damaged. We'll get to the cons in a second, that's one of them. Um, and I paid $42. So I returned it, but the seller ran out of them, and so a new seller had them, and it was $57. And I got that, the second one showed up, and it wasn't damaged. So uh, if you're going to buy this, you should buy it from a place where you can return it and get it exchanged or buy it from a different seller uh, and not lose your money if it's if it's damaged um, because it is a fragile device that's a con we'll get to that but ultimately fifty seven dollars is maybe more a little more than a hot air popcorn popper would be but uh, it's a lot less than other types of roasting devices that we might use so I think it's a pretty reasonable price and the quality of the item when it arrives intact is pretty good. All right, and another pro is that it holds 50 to 60 grams of coffee. Now, that's also a con and we'll hear that and reasons why for that, but the pro is is that we can roast without having to roast a whole pound or a half a pound. We can roast a small batch and do some experimenting, doing some tests. Or if we just feel like changing it up for the week, let's say that you only roast a half a pound a week for yourself and you don't want to roast all one type of coffee for the week, you want to mix it up, you could do several small batches and what's it going to hurt you? You're going to be able to practice your roasting skills and but you're going to have two or three different coffees during the week. So that's kind of cool. That might be a big one for some of you guys. I know I've talked to some people about it where they're not roasting. Um, it takes them two weeks to go through a pound of coffee. And so this might be a cool little option to experiment with. All right. The other is, is that I mentioned it before, it's got great visibility. You can see in the front in that hole, 
and you can see your coffee, the color change, and know exactly what's happening with that coffee. So that's a huge pro. Another advantage is there was consistency in the color. So the development of all of the different beans, um, it was even. It was an even roast. So that's really exciting. And that's because we were able to swirl it, move it around, and keep it from having scorching, like roasting defects, tipping. And we got a nice, nice even roast. So that's really cool. Now, some of the cons are the damage. So this is a fragile device. This is made of ceramic. I think I did this before, but this is ceramic. If you drop this, it's going to break. If you just finish roasting and then you put this under cold water to cool it quick, it's going to crack in half. You don't want to do that. Um, you can read online, you can read comments that people have, reviews, and some will say it arrived damaged. True statement. Um, it cracked after the first time I used it. They probably had a very fast temperature change or they dropped it while it was hot or set it down too hard or something to that effect. Set it on a cold surface even, that will do it. So you need to be very careful. Just leave it on the stove, let it cool down for about 10 minutes and you should be okay. But it's definitely not stainless steel. It's definitely not cast iron. This is ceramic and it is a, a fragile material, so you need to be careful. Um, my purchase, as I mentioned before, the first one came through and it was damaged in shipping, and the second one came in intact, and so um, just be aware of that. Another con is that the handle gets hot. I saw some people in some videos roasting and the handle didn't seem to get that hot. They didn't have a mitt or anything on, but for me, it was hot. I had a, a, an oven mitt on, and I would recommend that you have a good quality oven mitt for um, to protect your hand from heat because my hand was getting very hot towards the end of that roast. Um, the handle's just not long enough, so that would be a design um, consideration if they were ever to redesign it. I doubt they will, but um, yeah, so just you want to have an oven mitt and just watch that you don't burn yourself because it gets very hot. The whole device gets hot. Even though there's a leather wrapper on the handle, it's going to get hot. The other negative is the roasting capacity. I thought it could be viewed as a positive, but for some it's also a negative. It's only 50 or 60 grams. And for those that are using quite a bit of coffee or don't want to have to roast in small batches, this is definitely not the roaster for you. But if you want to experiment, if you want to kind of learn uh, and try some different things using small batches rather than blowing through a pound or two pounds at a time, then uh, maybe it's not a con. But for some of you, it is. All right, the next con is that there is a learning curve with this roaster. And I guess there is for every roaster. This one in particular, um, the learning curve is trying to understand the heat and um, how hot to use for charge temperature. I shared with you my experience. Um, learning to swirl and how long to swirl, uh, all of that, um, how far to raise it off the flame to um, balance your temperatures or to, re to slow down the momentum of the roast. All those things are going to take a little bit of, of a learning curve, um, but that's okay. That's part of the fun of roasting. Another negative is, is that it's kind of tiring. Roasting and spinning and turning, agitating that coffee all the time gets a little tiring. I found my arm getting a little tired. Uh, so it's not that big of a deal. I guess you can get used to it. Uh, I guess we all need a little exercise. I know I do. But um, yeah, so that some people might see that as a con. Another con is, is that it's kind of smoky. Um, but again, a lot of home roasters are using devices that smoke. Uh, I've got a vent system here, so I'm not quite used to that. The only time I really see smoke is when I forget to turn on the cooling fan and I drop my coffee and I get a smoke cloud. So, um, but yeah, so it smokes a little. And also the chaff, that was something I didn't miss from my Be More days and my Popper days. Um, the chaff, instead of going into a chaff collector, goes all over the stove. And yeah, so... I guess it's not a big deal. Pull out the vacuum, the hand vac, and suck it up, and you're good to go. And last, there were no instructions. 
that was a little irritating to me that there weren't any instructions that came along with the roaster. So I watched some of the demos, uh, the examples online. Wasn't really impressed, but it did help me kind of understand or uh, create an expectation uh, and possibly some things that I needed to adjust. So no instructions and yeah, that's what it is. So those are the cons. Uh, overall, I, like I said before, I would recommend this for home coffee roasters, especially if you just want to try something different. It's not a lot of money. Um, for some of you, it might be a lot of money, and I understand that. But it's definitely not in the price range of most coffee roasting um, equipment that we might be using for home coffee roasting. So uh, I'm glad that I had a chance to do this. And I guess it's kind of a review. I'm not used to doing reviews. That's not what this channel is all about. It's more about the experience. And so I hope that this experience that I've had and what I've shared with you will help you and maybe help you think outside the box a little bit about what you've been doing with home coffee roasting. All right, just a couple other real quick pieces of information and then we'll wrap things up. Uh, next week or the following week, I will have this other roaster. I'm really excited about this because it's different. It's quite different than what we just experienced here with this roaster, but it is a manual roasting device. So I'm kind of excited to show you guys that. Uh, if you hit the bell icon, uh, that will um, notify you when that video goes up and you'll be able to see that video. It's either going to be... Um, in a week or two weeks and you'll want definitely want to check that out all right and just a reminder please go to my community tab on my channel and take the poll that's asking you what type of home coffee roasting device you're using that would really help me and it helps me in crafting videos for you and lastly if you've got questions about the roaster that i just used this nouveau ceramic korean coffee roaster or uh, comments from a personal experience if you've used this roaster leave those in the comments below that would be awesome if you've got questions about home coffee roasting ask those questions I'll do my best to help answer those. And I really appreciate you guys watching this video. Thank you so much and have a great week roasting.